In this video, we'll use Excel to explore the pool table problem, a great problem-solving activity that relates to algebra, number theory, geometry, and that can be used at many different levels of mathematics. So what is the pool table problem? I'm going to just illustrate with an example from this applet from the NCTM. You start with a rectangle of various natural number dimensions, and from the bottom left corner, launch a pool table, a pool ball at a 45 degree angle and then the ball bounces as it would ideally angle of incidence equals angle of reflection making perpendicular lines. You can ask all kinds of questions like what pocket will it land in, how many times will it bounce, etc. Those are the typical questions. We'll be able to look at some other questions too. Now Here's what we're going to do that's a little bit different than the applet. We're going to lose the play-by-play, -play, which actually when you've been working on the problem for a while gets a bit tedious. And instead we'll have these sliders. And we can just change the dimension of the pool table just like that. Now, a little bit about how this program is going to work. One of the things that inspired me to try to represent this problem in Excel was that using Excel forces you to use coordinates and there's a lot of insight that you can get into this problem by using coordinates. So we're going to start with the ball at 0, 0 and we're going to take diagonal steps. At the beginning we'll be going over 1, up 1 and then when we hit the top we'll switch to over 1, down 1. So basically what happens is when we hit the bottom or the top we need to change vertical directions. And when we hit the left or the right, we need to change horizontal directions. And in this case, changing directions is going to be multiplying our step by negative 1. So if we're going down, we go up, vice versa. OK, so let's see what this looks like. Now, I actually started putting the graph in, which is probably not what you would do, but I need to be a little efficient with my time and space here. So x and y are going to be the coordinates of the ball. Horizontal and vertical are going to give us the next step we're going to take after this position. And then we can change the width and height of the rectangle here. So wherever we're at with our x, in order to get our new x, we add the horizontal step. Fairly simple. And you can ignore the graph for now. Now I'm going to drag this over for the y, and you'll see that the formula here is correct too, that b2 is our existing y, d2 is our next vertical step. Okay, now to decide the next horizontal and vertical direction is a little bit trickier. Basically, in the horizontal way, we first have to decide whether we've hit a wall. So if we've hit the left wall, that's going to be x equals 0. And if we hit the right wall, it's actually going to be the width again. It's not right yet, but it will be. So what we need here is an if. So we're trying to see, did we hit a wall yet? So if the x coordinate is equal to 0, that means, oops, sorry. i got to put an or in here because we've got two things we're testing. If we hit the left wall or if we hit the right wall. And the right wall is going to be the width. I'm going to hit an F4 here because the width stays the same no matter which row we're in. And we'll close that OR. So if one of these things is true, that means that we hit the wall and we have to change directions, which is multiplying by minus 1. So that equal minus 1 times our previous direction or else we'll just do our previous direction. All right, so there's a formula here. And to get the vertical direction, the formula is very similar. So I'm going to drag it. B3 equals 0 is, is the y coordinate touching the bottom, y coordinate touching the top. We don't actually want that to be the top is the height, not the width. So I need to change that to L. But then minus 1 times d2 is changing the vertical direction, and d2 is keeping the vertical direction. So we're good there. And now I'm going to drag this down to 401. 
so that we have 400 squares because I'm going to make my sliders go 20 by 20. And it's an interesting question to think how many squares do you really need. I'm using 400 because that's 20 squared. You can think about whether I could do with less. Okay, now I magically got the graph here. This is the part where I'm skimping a bit. And if you don't know how to insert a chart in Excel, you should probably find somebody else's video. But the kind of chart that I used is a scatter plot with um, straight lines connecting things. And um, I used the data from A2 all the way down to the last Y. And then I had to do some tweaking with the axes. You have to set the, um, you have to fix the um, increment to be one and you need to show all the grid lines. So you can kind of play with the axes to get this right. Okay, so when you've got the graph how you want it, then it's time to put in the sliders. Now to put in the sliders is it's actually in some ways a little bit simpler in the older version of Excel. In Excel 2003, for example, you go to the view menu and then you pick um, toolbars and then the forms menu and um, that will get you to the point we'll be at in a minute. Now in Excel 2010 we have to first make sure that the developer tab is showing which right now it's not. So you go to file and then let me get a magnifying glass here. We pick options and we pick um, customize ribbon. Now when you go to the right here there is this um, little box developer and that shows us we want to show the developer tab and then um, we can close this. See this is what I didn't want to waste so much time like I'm doing now with the graph. And that, now you can see up here there's a developer tab. So we go there and we go to insert and you pick the scroll bar here. If you're on the older version of Excel you would have been able to get that from the forms menu. I'm going to make a scroll bar here. I'm actually going to do a control C and a control V so I can get my two scroll bars. Okay, and then to set up the scroll bar, I go at the bottom to format control. And let's see, my current value is five. Minimum value, I'm going to make one. Maximum value, 20. And then I link it, I just click, it, click in the cell where the value is right there. So, um, show you real quick. Current value. I think we're out of the screen. Current value. Maximum incremental, etc. Okay, and then I need to do that with the other one. Same idea. Just the different cell. And now we've got our slider set up. We can move things around. Now, one thing that's kind of fun is that we can change the starting place. So now I'm starting at 1, 0. Oh, now we're going to the corners. It starts bouncing back after you do this. And you get some interesting kind of loops. So we've got new questions. When will we have a loop? When will we go to corners? If we have loops like this, how many loops do we have? If we start at 2, 0, we get a different kind of loop. 3, 0. No, that goes to the corners. So there are a lot of things we can play with in this representation of the pool table problem in Excel. Thanks.